Hey, hello from the beautiful outdoors here in Sedona. I was reflecting just now on what inspires me today. And so I wanted to share the last little bit of my hike with you and see what inspires you today and see if we can help each other out with just feeling really awesome. So I am headed home as I've shared and I've seen so much wildlife out here in the last couple of weeks. That's been super inspiring. Uh, I've seen a huge deer several times in several different locations. And that also uh, feels just so beautiful and timely. So I am headed home at a certain time today, which is kind of rare. Uh, people often ask, like, what our days look like with 10 children. So uh, I guess I'm sharing a sort of make it up in your mind how it looks snapshot. But I'm headed home because my husband does phone calls for his own business on Tuesdays. And really pretty freaking awesome that that's the one day per week that he actually has things that he needs to, you know, have quiet for. So he kind of goes away for the day. And actually, I kind of look forward to it because it's my one day just home alone with the kids. Um, the big kids usually sleep pretty late and then head off to the skate park or babysit or go to work or whatever they're doing. And let's see, I can't lose my way while I'm talking here. Um, the younger kids, the three little girls, True and the baby, are all home with me. And let's see, we've been working on reading with True. I thought that was a fun thing to share. Uh, we don't push our kids to read at any certain age or really push them at all. After having this many kids, I know that they will do it when they're ready and they will want to do it because they suddenly realize the world is not so interesting if you can't read and they want to be able to. So he is at that point and I won't lie, I've been waiting for it. It's very exciting. Um, I do talk a lot about how we deal with schooling and such in one of my mothering podcasts. Somebody just asked this morning for me to talk about that, but I have a whole podcast on it. So check out our podcast archive page if you're interested in that mothering episode or any of the mothering episodes. But anyway, True is well on his way to reading and he already is doing it. So for most of my kids, we've used this book um, and I don't have the author's name. So, oh, well, I'll, I'll maybe post it later, but something about a um, hundred lessons you know, reading in a hundred lessons. And it's just a book. And we've had it since Amelia was about six or seven years old. So for quite some time. And it doesn't work, quote unquote, for every kid, because you know, they're all different. They learn in different ways. In fact, my son Rune just learned to read by osmosis. I swear, we all laugh about it because we have no idea how he learned to read. He just did. Um, so not every kid needs like a structure or a book, but this book, if you need one or want to check it out, is really awesome. And for True, it's working really fantastically. There's a hundred lessons. They're really short. Once you as the parents get a hang of it, it's super easy. Um, he's almost halfway through the book and he's been able to read simple things at least, uh, from pretty early on in the book. Again, because he was ready. He was just ready. So I don't really have to do a lot. I'm not into, you know, killing myself over a kid reading. Um, I get easily frustrated. <laughs> so a kid needs to be ready and they need to like already have the drive and the desire and a basic understanding before I want to sit down and, you know, do a lesson thing because that's not really how we do things generally. But this book's awesome. So I'll stop talking about that. But that's part of my day is committing to true and his reading every single day, which has been fun. And it gives us something to do together. And it gives us structure and, you know, 15 minutes and we're done, honestly. So it's not a big deal. And the other girls, the younger girls can just kind of hang tight while we do that. Uh, we do read a lot of books, especially with the younger ones. I do. <laughs> I can't say Jason does. I do. I love reading books with them. Um, I love buying books, even just, you know, cheap use, go to Goodwill and just come home with a whole pile. I prefer that over the library, to be honest, especially right now. I don't know if our library is even open. I don't really do the library. Uh, I end up owing them a lot of money that I could have spent on books. So I would rather buy used books and, you know, we can hopefully treat them nicely, but there's no pressure there, which 
it's not fun of pressure <laughs> with a bunch of little kids around, especially a almost two year old that loves to rip everything. So we will read our fair share of books today. Um, I don't know what else we'll do. Sometimes we like to bake something or make something. The girls, the three little girls are pretty self-sufficient. They um, go out in the yard or kind of right out uh, near our house in the desert and they play. They play in the dirt. It's so beautiful right now. Um, you know, they know not to get uh, pricked by cactuses. Cacti, I guess is the correct word. And they just play. They bring their little tiny animals out there and they just play in the dirt like kids do. So I love that about them. And that makes my day really smooth because they're kind of outside for a lot of it. And I've just got a baby to contend with. And he's pretty easy. Um, he takes naps just right in the house in a pack and play <laughs> amongst the chaos most days. Some days he doesn't, I won't lie. Some days I have to just hold him and he wants to nurse all day. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going home to. And actually, Jason just texted me that he doesn't have any phone calls this morning. So I could stay out here as long as I like, which is really fantastic. And he really is the best, the best partner ever. Um, I get out here every morning and I get grounded and inspired, hopefully for the day, just by nature. And then at the end of the day, honestly, I need a lot of self time. Uh, I'll be honest about that. I don't know that everybody does, but I think if you are one of those people like me, then it's cool to be honest about it because you can schedule it into your day. And uh, at the end of the day, when he's done with phone calls around 3 p.m., then I will take some more time and I will go in my room for at least an hour and meditate or do yoga or uh, vaginal steaming, something like that, um, or just sit there. I've been doing yoga and that's been feeling really great at the end of the day. I'm kind of surprised with how much energy I have the whole day. Um, and I'm attributing that to not drinking coffee. I love coffee. So it's it's not been hard, though. And not starting my day with coffee has made it so that I have energy all day. Duh. So it took me a while to figure that out. But it's a really nice pattern to have at the end of the day to have the energy to go take care of yourself. And, um, you know, before dinner, like my kids are sort of tired as I think many of our kids are at that time of the day. I have no problem turning on a show. Uh, they are very fond of Peppa Pig and that's pretty much all they have access to. So we've got Peppa Pig on repeat, but I've got no problem putting on a couple of Peppa Pigs there at the end of the day before dinner. And I get to go take care of myself and doing that twice a day is really uh, what keeps me sane. And, you know, not that anyone necessarily cares, but because we do get the question often, like, how do you guys do all the things you do? You know, how do you take care of clients? How do you take care of your kids? And the answer is you take care of yourself. And then you have the energy and the inspiration to take care of other people. So I am blessed and fortunate. Um, but I also have made the time and commitment to myself to do that twice a day. And that is how I stay sane and grounded. Um, you know, I'm sleeping pretty well with a baby at night. So thank God for that. But all in all, uh, it's just a beautiful life. And I'm feeling so grateful to be out here. Yeah, I mean, I hear from a lot of women that that is a requirement. And it's nothing to feel ashamed about. Um, this sense of like, oh, that's so, you know, it's so selfish. Or like, how do you get that time? Or what about your kids? You got to figure it out, you know, for you and you're not me and I'm not you, but you've got to figure it out for you if that's important to you. And if it's not important to you, then, you know, just proceed. But it is very important to me. And being off call right now has renewed my dedication to myself um, because, you know, I don't have clients to take care of right now. So. I don't need to use that as an excuse, you know, oh, I got to run off here. Oh, so-and-so needs this. Nope, I don't have any of that right now. So I am dedicated to myself twice a day. And that feels really, really good. And let's see, I've been super inspired by some mantra music. Um, I'm doing Danielle Laporte's Heart Centered, which is a monthly group. Highly recommend. But she has recommended music in there every month. And um, let's see, this one artist I've been listening to. I'm not sure I'm going to say it right. Alexia uh, Chelun, Chelun, not sure how to say it. And she was new to me, but she has a bunch of albums and she has a mantra album that's really beautiful. In fact, my children love it too. Um, Deva's been going through some like emotional 
transitions. She'll be four and you know, we have a new baby. So not surprising. Let's go this way, guys. I want to stay on the trail. Move it, Hannah. Uh, Deva, yeah, she's been going through some stuff. So we've been working on talking about her feelings. And she'll say to me, Mom, I feel worried. Just because, you know, she's almost four. And she'll say, I want that music. Can you put on my music? And she wants to hear the mantra music. So we just put it on quiet here on my phone. And she says, it always makes me feel so much better. So if you need a concrete tool, you could check out one of her albums. Um, Krishna Das is a standard favorite in our house as well for mantra music. But yeah, just a really beautiful, inspiring tool. Man, I'm totally like blabbing this morning as if I had coffee, but I did not. I might have some though. I might. Um, I do have a bunch of indie bear stuff I want to get done today. Oh, finally, I was super inspired this morning by JP Sears newsletter. Uh, if you don't know who he is, of course, go find him here on Instagram. Sign up for his newsletter because people like him are, you know, really towing the line and probably will get themselves suspended from all social media at some point. Not to mention, um, yeah, the work he's doing isn't comedy per se anymore. I mean, it's amazing, but it's not, it's not what it was, but it's better. And I signed up for, for his newsletter and I was super inspired to read it. And I don't know about you, but I don't read much email wise other than stuff sent directly to me. Um, I don't have time for newsletters other than Danielle Laporte and his now. So two people I would recommend uh, using um, in the best of ways, using to inspire yourself, to remind you about what's important right now and what's not important right now. Um, Danielle had a really awesome post yesterday here on Instagram that I forwarded to a, a few friends even because it was so poignant and it was so potent and on time. And it was all about slowing down just taking a breath collectively right now and realizing that maybe that's where we're at, you know, with all the craziness. We're not really at a doing point. We are at a slowing down and watching and waiting and making the right move for us on purpose with intention. So I don't know about you, but these are the places my inspiration comes from. Often um, it really helps me fuel my own, which of course is also needed. But I think there are some just beautiful people in the world doing beautiful work um, and we can all help each other just make the best of every day and love it and enjoy it, right? That's why we're here. Not here to be miserable. We're here to be happy. And that's my spiel from the mountain this morning. So I guess I don't have to head home. I might take an extended hike here with my two canines and uh, go back to quiet or the mantra music. But I wish you a beautiful day. And I um, always love hearing from you here on Instagram or on our social platform. Don't forget our 13 moons is still pay what you will. So if you're feeling kind of down today and you're feeling like you just can't do anything, can't go anywhere, um, get started with our course. You know, you don't have to be pregnant. Maybe you're just interested in um, birth or pregnancy or postpartum, right? So just join us there, indiebirth.org forward slash 13 moons, pay what you can. And we really do trust you to pay what you can and then pay it forward. If you can't pay a whole lot, there's no judgment. We don't care. We want you to spread the word, though. We want, to, we want you to tell your friends. We want you to tell your family. We want this to be the course that everyone takes. Everyone takes because it's accessible and it changes their lives. Um, and I've been trying to post sort of regularly in the group. I mean, we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that are new. So it's a pretty active um, social environment if you need another one online. And I've been trying to post in there, just asking questions and getting people talking. So I think it's fantastic. And the more people that do it, the more fun it is to be there. And not that we all need another online thing to be checking on our phones. But, you know, if you're paring down, this might be one you decide to pare down to because you're going to learn a lot and you're going to inspire yourself and you're going to inspire other people. And whether you're going to be a midwife or a doula or you just want to learn to learn, it's all good. We're there for you and we want to support you. So check that out. All right. This has gotten quite long. I'm going to go and I wish you all a beautiful day.